Today we're very honored to have Mr. Rakan Tarazzuni. He is the Communication Director for the Public Investment Fund, PIF. Uh, Mr. Rakan manages all the PR and communications matter for PIF, including marketing and branding. Uh, Mr. Rakan is an engineer by degree and a marketer by profession. Uh, Mr. Rakan has over 18 years of experience. Uh, Mr. Rakan started his career with Procter & Gamble, Procter & Gamble as a marketing manager, then he moved to the National Commercial Bank and in the marketing department for credit cards. After that, Mr. Rakan established his own branding firm that was specialized in real estate industry, along with small other side marketing-related business. Uh, Mr. Rakan joined Microsoft as a head of Windows and Devices Division in 2001. And I think he stayed there five 11. years. And, uh, 2011. And uh, I think he stayed there five years. In 2016, he moved to PIF to join the transformation of Saudi economy movement and the Division 2030. With that, again, I ask you please turn off your mobiles and uh, show and also talk and do the lecture. Let's uh, no uh, discussions during the lecture. Let's go ahead and have a big welcome for Mr. Rakan, our speaker. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Mahmoud. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi wa sallam. I'm guessing you guys, ladies and gentlemen, saw the uh, message about this session. Uh, while my work and my field is communication and marketing, this session is not exactly on that part from a commercial perspective, but more of a personal perspective. I will start by discussing um, uh, the idea of what is it that means to have a brand, the brand from a commercial perspective and from a personal perspective. 2008, I was on top of the world. I had my own business. It was thriving. It was successful. Millions in the bank, houses, cars, wife, kids, everything. I was on top of the world. I had everything I wanted to have. I was thinking by then, khalas, nothing goes down from then on. It's only one way up. 2000, and when my business was in the real estate business with the marketing company that mentioned, and that was business all over the region from the whole Gulf region because of the boom of the real estate in that, back, uh, that era. 2009, 2010, the market crash of the financial industry all over the world happened. And of course, it impacted the industry in uh, the region as well. And I lost everything. The money, the house, the car, the wife, the kids, everything. I went to rock bottom. I was with three million rials below in debt, jobless, zero, nothing. And at that moment, it was a disaster for me. Khalas, life as, as I know it, it's over. Either I surrender, I become a victim to society and to what happened to me. And khalas, I reached the rest of my life feeling that I am a victim and oh, well, a few ayam I had this, a few ayam I had that, and then that's it, or I do something about it. It took me a year to realize the situation, to realize what happened, to wake up from that trauma of the situation, to work on finding a way out, which meant courses, which meant uh, books, reading, counseling with experts into the field. And that's when I realized, okay, fine, I'm not dead, which means I have, a, I have an opportunity to come back whatever the coming back is, that at least go out from the below zero level into the level that I wanted to, and so on. So from a lot of extensive courses, a lot of books and reading and sessions and counseling with experts into the field of marketing, the field of self-development, I was able to come back into this. So in, 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 in essence, my story was not over yet because at the end of the day, I am the person writing the story, I am the person who's creating the story. If you were to be asked, Liam, each one of you, to write a book of your own life story, ideally, all of us would write a dreamy, beautiful story of the ending that we want. Well, in reality, whatever book that you write at this moment, whatever story that you put into that book, you can still achieve it because you're here, you're young, you still have the rest of your life ahead of you, so you can write that book. So in essence, whatever that you want that story to be, you can write it, and then you can accomplish it and work on it. Nothing is impossible, nothing is out of reach. Whatever that happens, whatever the obstacles you have into your life are always just stepping stone to the next level that you can work on. My name is Rakan Tarabzouni and I'm head of communication for the PR and communication department for PIF. 
and I've been there for them with uh, almost a year and a half now, and I've been working with the PIF vision and mission into building the new level of uh, PIF and the new level of, of uh, communication and for the investments of Saudi for the future investments. Uh, this is my email, my Twitter account, and this is my blog, rakantarabzuni.com, where I work on it. Um, I'm a marketeer by profession, an engineer by degree, an entrepreneur by heart. I love to establish a lot of businesses. I've, a lot of businesses I've established, and many of them have been sold and moved on. Um, I, when I'm not working on my marketing profession with my company, I work on my blog, and I work on self-development. Because of what happened to me back in the 2010 and, and so on, I worked on creating this blog from all the learnings that I've had. No one has to go through what I've gone through, so why, why not share the learning with others? Why not share the learning with people so that they can learn more and avoid some of the mistakes I've been through? Branding. Branding, especially those of you who are working, uh, studying marketing, know what branding and communication means. All these are logos of well-renowned brands, especially your brand. Of course, to be honest, the first time I've seen your logo was yesterday, but because I'm not into the education industry, so I'm not the target audience. But all these are brands are well known. We know them by heart when we see the logo, and we know what it means. A brand is not just a logo, not just a name, not just a product. It's more of the essence of the brand. Whatever perception we have of Starbucks, or Apple, or Saudi, or Bake, or Google, or Microsoft, that is what a brand is. It's the perception that we as end users, if you are the target audience, have in mind for that product. So the, this collection of perceptions is what the, makes a brand. So when a brand is launched, they put in their minds a set of mission, vision, values that they want to uh, uh, demonstrate to the world what their products means. For example, Nova and so on. If you as a target audience, a consumer, or the, the end user, believed in those perceptions and saw them or saw higher of them for the same brand, that means that brand is successful. They were able to convey their message to the target audience. But if you think less of them from what they wanted to reach, or they tell the world, that means they failed to deliver the message of the branding they want. We know a lot of brands that launch into something, then failed because of bad usage, uh, bad communication, customer service, not living up to the dream or the promise they give to their customers or their target audience, and that does not give them the, the value. Today when we talk about cars, we talk about fashion, we talk about food industry, automatically when you hear any brand name, you know this means good, this means cheap, this means expensive, this means nice, elegant, ugly, and so on and so forth. Regardless of what they want to tell you, you have that perception in your mind. We as humans, are the same. We're all brands of our perceptions that we tell to the outside world. Within the external uh, self of yours, your friend, your family, your outside world, whatever they think of you is the brand that you're exposing to them. Whether you think of yourself, I'm a nice guy, I'm a supportive guy, I'm a hardworking and so on. Whatever, if we ask, if we take you out of the room and ask your colleagues in the room, what do you think of Fulan? What they say at that moment about you is that's the real brand of you. That's what they think of you, not what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is important, but if you don't act it, you don't live it, it doesn't really mean much. It just means a, an illusion in your head that doesn't take you anywhere. But what people say about you when you're not around, that was your real value of your brand, your personal brand is. So the perception of exceeding the perception, exceeding the values that you per, uh, persuade to the others is what matters to make you is a strong brand that you want to deliver. Of course, branding as a concept has been on for about 200 years or so when it was used al cattles to distinguish them into uh, groups based on the farmers. In, in reality, for, for you to have a brand, you need to know what you want from life. You need to know where you want to go. What do you want to do? Where is, the next five years will take you, where the next 10 years will take you. Even if those are just uh, vague or general dreams, but you need to understand where do you want to go so that I can set myself. Uh, for example, if you're a, uh, if you're a doctor, a medicine, medical doctor, and you will say, I want to work with doctors without borders, and all I want to do in life is just helping others. That means you can affect on some other parts of your life, probably your marriage, your personal lives, that will be set aside because there will be less priority because you wanted to do uh, Dr. Without Borders. But at least you know, there's no right or wrong answer in this. As long as you know what you want in life and you're pursuing that what you want. In essence, we have to all have those four levels of understanding of what we want in life. From our career, from our physical, uh, in terms of uh, body and so on, uh, personal lives and spiritual. We have to understand all these. Career, what do I want to do? What profession I want to do? University 
is a fundamental level that gives you the degree, the way of thinking, how structural thinking as a, as a person to go out into the real world. You don't have to be working with the same degree that you graduated with. That's a choice, but it, it is a fundamental. It gives you the fundamental education, fundamental way of thinking, structured, understanding, cooperating with the rest of the world. Then when you go out to the real world, that's up to you into deciding what kind of job you want. I'll give you an example, for example. Procter & Gamble, the well-known uh, FMCG company in the world, whenever they hire, they only hire fresh graduates. They never hire people with experience. And it doesn't matter what uh, degree you have, what uh, major you were in. As long as you have a uh, degree from college, they will take you and they will tell you, what do you like? HR, finance, marketing, whatever the field you like. They will put you in that field and then they will give you extensive courses into that field to shape you to the, what they want from that company. As long as you have the degree. So it doesn't really matter what, had, what degrees you have, as long as you know what you want afterwards. From physical, of course, healthy is important. If you don't invest in your health today, you'll definitely invest into it later on when you're older. It's a, a common factor, it will never change. Invest now or invest later, it's a choice. Personal, you need to know what you want from life, into your personal life, how do you want to build that, what's the priority of personal versus career. It's also a choice, no right or wrong, but whatever decision you choose, you're responsible for it. And of course, spiritual, from a religion perspective, we have to have that connection. Uh, it's it's med meditating, it's that connection of the personal inner self, whatever that means to you as a person from whatever religion you're in. As long as you have that personal connection that helps you grow into the next level of your life. An interesting book by Jim Rohn, The Exceptional Living. It's a very interesting book of a self-growth of a person who had a lot of struggles and then went into a new life. And today he's a very well-known uh, health development speaker. And he has five uh, rules that he spoke about in his book. Number one, if you wish for anything in life, study it, learn it, master it. It's very important. I, I wish to go to the gym. I wish to be a coder. Uh, but wishing without doing anything about it doesn't really mean anything. In reality, all the successful people in the world who achieved something, Bill Gates, Jobs, anybody, all those big names that we know in history that made something, all of them, based on studies, spent 10,000 hours into that profession, be it sports, be it coding, be it engineering, whatever it is. 10,000 hours is the key secret to succeed in any field you want in the world. 10,000 hours you spend in any field, and of course that will take years, when you become a master into that field and you become a professional in the field. If you go read the outliers, you go to read a lot of the books that talks about the success of those people, you'll find that all they spent 10,000 hours into that field. Capture the great ideas in writing. Never assume that you'll memorize everything. It's so hard to memorize, especially with today's communication world with so many bombarding messages all over us. We need to focus on capturing all the successful people as well. They always have a journal in hand. They capture, they write, be it on the mobile today or in, your, in a, a, a journal that you have, paper journal that you have. But capture ideas, capture thoughts, capture learnings that you have in your daily life and learn from those. Because when you capture those, you'll never forget them. But if you rely on your memory, you're bound to forget. We all forget. You may not be able to do all you find out, but it's important to know what you can do. The worst thing in life is that you reach an age of khalas, uh, the end of your life, and you're, oh, I wish I've done that, I wish I've tried this, I wish I've did skydiving, I wish I've did learn this, uh, feel that, whatever it is, try, see if you can. If you fail, it's okay, you can move on, and it's not the end of the world, you can move on. But never fall into the trap of regret. Oh, I wish I'm 10 years younger, 20 years younger, 30 years, 50 years younger and try something that I've never tried for the first time or did something for the first time. Always try and see your limits, test your limits, know your limits so that you can work with them and not just be on a safe, uh, boring level of not doing or not trying anything. In reality, we all love to read interesting books of epic heroism, success stories of amazing stories of people who hit rock bottom and then come up again and be successful. But in our own lives, we become afraid. We become less uh, aggressive. We try to be safe. We try to be uh, secure. Okay, what if I fail? What if it doesn't work? I will have a, no job. But I had no job for a year. I was below three million riyals. I'm still alive, alhamdulillah. I, it will work. Nothing is the end, but at least you try, at least you see what you can do. It's not what happens to you that sets the pace, but how do you react? Seven Covey says, it's always that 
re response to any stimulus that happens to our lives is that we set the pace. If I was going to the work in the morning and I have a car accident, and there was a whole debate in the morning. I go to the office in a bad mood, I pick fights with my employees, uh, it ruins the whole day. And then I go home, I fight with the family, it just ruins the whole fight. And all those people whom I, I sprayed my anger on afterwards had nothing to do with the accident. It was my accident with the other person. Why should I put it out on my employees? Why should I put it on my family at home? You need to understand and allow to control yourself on your emotions. Just because somebody uh, is attacking me, somebody had a car accident with me, that doesn't mean I have to put anger into it. You have to control your response to anything. It's that response that sets the pace for your life. It's a mindset at the end of the day. Your mindset controls everything in your life. And you have a good mindset, success, energy, uh, everything that's positive will happen to you. And you have a negative mindset, it of course reflects on anything that happens to you into that day as well. عندنا في الحديث تفاعل بالخير تجدوه. It's not just a saying. It is a concept of energy. If you have that positive energy outward, you'll get positive energy inward. If you have that negative energy outward, it will only get you negative energy inward. Don't wish it was easier. Wish it was better. Of course, with every uh, obstacle that we face, every problem that we face, it's hard. It might hurt you. It might take you down. Learn from it. Try to grow from it into the next level. Life has an interesting concept into this. If you fall into a trap, and a mistake, or a problem, or any situation, and you don't learn the lesson, that same problem will happen again. It's a cycle. It will keep hitting you with the same issue, the same problem, same uh, obstacle, until you learn the lesson, okay, now you're ready to go to the next level. But if you don't get that, you'll find yourself falling, oops, learn to get out of it, learn what happened, why did it happen, so I can move on to the next challenge in life. Learn to work harder on yourself than you work on your job. We can all have that job 8 to 5 or 8 to 3 or the government and so on. But if you don't develop yourself, you don't work on your own self-development, you'll never grow in that job, you'll never grow into having your own job, if you, a career if you want it, or company, or success, or grow into it faster than versus others. Always focus on developing yourself beyond the 8 to 5 concept. Yesterday I was doing an interview to a fresh grad, well, Three years experience. And I was asking her, what do you want to do in, as, a, as a career? Where do you see yourself in 15 years? She said, I want to be a CEO. I said, but that's not an objective of a career. CEO is just a level, that's a position. If you have your own company, it's easy. She said, no, I want to be a CEO. And obviously, she did not understand what CEO means. It's just heading of a business. And it was actually disappointing because she seemed, uh, based on the CV, very interesting marketing profession into the three years that she's done as a junior. But the, just the idea, I want to be a CEO to manage my own business, to manage people. It's a very narrow-minded concept, and I try to explain to her, uh, CEO is just a concept. You can be a leader without title, definitely. You don't need to, ha to be CEO to manage people. You don't need to be a CEO to, to, uh, to manage a business. You can do your own self-development and open entrepreneurial shop and sell whatever you want to sell and manage your own self. So it's very important to understand where do we want to go, where, how do we want to develop ourselves into the next level. Being a CEO is not an objective. If she said, I wanted to be a writer, or a painter, or an engineer, that's a career, that's a profession that you want to excel, be it a CEO or not. Whatever that passion you have, that's what you should focus on. Imagine if all the jobs in the world pay the same. Any job in the world pays you 100 riyals a month. No matter if you're a wazir or a ghafir, you'll be paid 100 riyals a month. Then you get the choice of any job, any dream job you like in life, regardless of the money, because money is not an issue. Then whatever that passion of a job that you have in mind, that uh, passion of a career or a profession that you have in mind, that's what you should go do now, because you, that's what you'll be excelling in, that will be, uh, be successful in, because you love it. You do it out of uh, passion, out of love, not just 8 to 5 in the morning, oh shit, I have to go to work. No, it's something I, I love going to work every morning because I love what I do, that's what you should uh, focus on. In deathbed literature, they always talk about when the people uh, on their deathbeds, they ask them questions of what is it that regrets in life, what is it that you wish you've done. No one says, oh, I wish I made another million. Well, I wish I stayed in the office a few more hours. No one says that. Everybody talks about their personal lives. Oh, I wish I would spend more time with my kids. I wish I told my wife I love her more. 
I wish I spent more time with my family. I wish I did this sport. I wish I did this uh, skydiving, bungee jumping, whatever that's on a personal growth level. So it's very important that we understand those things into our lives and put our priorities into that level. Whatever passion you have, think of it deeply. Understand what is it that you like the most. If all are the same, what kind of field would you like to do? What kind of profession or job would you like to have? Of course, building a profession is not something that happens overnight. As I mentioned earlier, the 10,000 hour key, that is important, which means it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. All the successful people did not finish 10,000 hours in a year. It goes into a cycle of few years until you master that field. So you have to understand what is it that you want to get involved in? How do you do it? You have to understand the technical mastery. If it's coding, for example, like Bill Gates, Bill Gates used to spend hours and hours after hours after school in high school into the lab of the, of the uh, high school that he was in, only coding back then with the cards. For the, uh, maybe not the older generation would know it, myself would know it, with the cards. So, and he had to spend 10,000 hours before he reached his first year of college into understanding coding in the basics. You understand the connection, understand, ask around, ask your friends, ask your father, ask your family, people who are in that field that you like. What does it mean to be in that field? What kind of level into that field? You have to understand what you like, but you cannot just read about it. Read, fine, go Google it and so on, but ask around for people who are really actually in that field. Get a mentor. Mentor is really an important thing. I cannot stress this uh, more. From the days from when I was in PNG over uh, 15 years ago, having a mentor is really important. Get somebody who is an expert. You don't even need to know that person or meet them. You can do that online today. But know a mentor who is an expert in the field that you like and do a monthly call with that person. Half an hour. Just pick their brains on the topic that you want. Understand how they think about it. But it has to be somebody you trust. Somebody you trust their advice. Somebody you trust their wisdom into the world. Everything you do, work with the end in mind. The seven rules of the highly effective people, seven copy. Work with everything in mind. I have to know in 10 years, in five years, where do I want to be? Not maybe 100%, but at least the direction wise. If I want to be in the marketing field, then خلاص, I'm not going to go uh, finance. Obviously, I have to understand where I'm going. If I want to be uh, in the public sector field, then I have to understand where is it I'm going. But at least have that end in mind. Where am I going? Where will this next step? Make it a small milestones. Not probably 10 years, but every year. Put that, write it, write it down. And always, always, when you think about it, if you just thought about it without putting it on paper, it will never really become reality. The subconscious mind will never register it. But write it down on a piece of paper, on a journal, on a book, on a PC, whereas it will always stick in your head and you'll always remember yourself, remind yourself of what it is. طبعا الصورة هنا مو واضحة كثير عشان الإضاءة بس can anybody tell me what this is? يمكن الإضاءة سيئة شوي. Any trials? Any? إيش؟ حفرة لا. رضاء سيئة صراحة سوري. ف... Any guessing? لا خلاص مش. طف النور بس لحظة بالله. Any guessing شباب؟ Ultrasound لا طيب. ها ah, guessing. Dinosaur. Turtle, elephant. elephant, it's an elephant. Taib, I was too close, I was zoomed in. You were not able to see the elephant properly because we were too zoomed in. It's very important that you always take a step back to understand more of what you're seeing. If you're too close to any situation, be it good or bad, you'll only see from your angle. You'll not be able to see the full picture. That's why when we're in trouble, what do we do? We ask others, because others see it from the outside. They might help us, give us ideas. So always try to step back. Whenever something happens, don't rush into a decision making. Pull back, take a deep breath, count to 10, think of it from a deep breath. If I was from the outside, what would I see? How would I analyze the situation? If this happened to my friend, how would, what would I tell them? How would I advise them? Because Usually when we're in a, in a situation of an of a, uh, emotional trauma or a, a tough situation, we're not logical. We always feel that we are trapped into our emotions and we think that we're thinking logically. Oh, but analyze myself, okay, analyze. No, calm down, pull back, think about it, see it from a full picture, try to understand what is it that you're looking at, how can you solve this problem. Seek advice because always the people you ask from the outside see the bigger picture. Are we okay on time? Okay. 
So with all this being said, how, how do we get what we want? How do we move forward? What do we have to plan? It's easier for you, obviously, because inshallah, you have the rest of your lives and yani, you're still young in college, so it is the best time now to plan. If I can get uh, uh, yani, whatever I can pay to go back to my college days and redo the whole thing, I would do it in a heartbeat because I've learned, it with, of course, with all my knowledge today. Otherwise, it won't make much. Yani, but still, no. <laughs> to understand what is it that we're in today and redo the whole thing. There, there are two types of people in this world. People who play to win, people who play not to lose. <coughs> playing to win versus playing not to lose is, is very uh, important. We always have to know who, which one are we? What do you want? Do you want to be the person walking at Masjid Jambul Health safely, securely, uh, whatever the job they give me, I'll take it. I'm not going to object. I'm going to just take it and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, khalas, Alhamdulillah Kulli Hal Taban, and just live with it and not beg, not ask for bigger, not achieve, not ambitious, no, no nothing. Or I want to be the playing to win, where I will fight and I will grow and I will achieve all the dreams, all the... Cra it's only those crazy people in this history of the world that really achieve something. All the ones who never really dare to dream are the ones who don't know their names. They just fell off the history books. The ones that are in the history books are the ones who play to win. The ones who dare the world to change and they change the world. What does it mean to play not to lose? Uh, these are some of the aspects when you think about it. Uh, it's self-defensive, it's just protective of yourself. It's always fear of survival. Oh, but what if I fail? No, الخوف يحكم كل شيء في حياتي فخلاص طالما انه انا what if I get here and I fail? فالخوف بيخلي كنترول على اي شيء. Winning and losing. Oh, I have to win. في العالم الباقي اذا خسر انا اهم شيء I have to win. I have to understand. والله ان وجدنا ابانا هكذا يفعلون طالما انهم يسوونها كذا انا راح اسوي كذا. طب اسال ليش يسووها؟ Find another way, لا لا بس خلاص طالما هم قالوا كذا ما راح اناقش الستاتس كو I'll just live with it. No, challenge, move on to it. The whole difference between fear and danger. Fear is, is a psychological matter in our heads. Fear is not real. الخوف هذا شيء مصطنع في عقول البشر. When I'm standing here in the middle of this podium and I'm afraid of falling, it's psychological. It doesn't make sense. If I jump all day here, I will not fall. Only if I'm here at the edge and I walk, I will fall. This is danger, this is not fear. هذا خطر واضح تمشي تطيح قاعدة باللوجيكال ما يبغى لها يعني أي ذكاء لكن إذا أنا واقف في نص الستيج وجامبينج راوند هير أو نيفر فول بيكوز في أرض تحتي ما في أي مشاكل فهذا فير هذا ما هو دينجر هذاك دينجر ففير إز سمثينج وي كريت إن أور مايندز داز نوت إكزيست إتس أولويز خيالي أولويز سايكولوجيكال ونيفر سمثينج هابنز أند يو فيل فير ثينك أوف إت ذيس واي تيك فير أوت How would you analyze the situation? Assuming there's no fear. How would you analyze the situation? And based on that, that's what you have to decide. Fear is only psychological, it never is real. Playing to win. These are the things that we have to focus on in playing to win. Risk and challenge. Always risk, always challenge. Calculate the risk, of course. But think, analyze, understand, and take the challenge. What if I just push it a little bit further? Why do I push the envelope a little bit more? Courage, creativity, think outside the box. Don't, don't follow the status quo. Never follow the status quo. أخرج من out of the box and think of it further. Win, win. I want to win. Why not? الخير موجود للجميع. I want to win. Everybody else wins. It's no big deal. Let's just focus on the growth of the well-being of society, well-being of myself. Learn. It's never uh, an old person to, uh, too old to learn. العلم اليوم موجود في كل مكان وفي كل easier access. من بين technology و online و كتب everything, courses. You can always learn beyond the books of the college. Even after when you go to the work field, you can always learn new stuff, new, new techniques, new tricks. Keep on learning, never stop. And it's about us. It's, and I have to grow and I have to give back to society. I have to grow into my own community, or my own society, my own city, my own country. It's very important that we have that concept or perspective of the global human being uh, society versus only me. And when you look at the difference between the two sets, you, it's very clear. If I am... Of course, it's a choice. فخر مطاف. سبحان الله. في ناس كثير نعرفهم هنا. في ناس كثير نعرفهم هنا. And there's no right or wrong. If I don't want to be rich, I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be known in history. I just want to live my life. وحياة طبيعية. والله يسر علينا ووظيفة وزوجة وأولاد وانتهي. ولا عندي أي طموح. Then fine. It's a choice. But the end of the day, it's your choice. Don't blame others. Oh, والله يريد أبوي سواري. يريد أهلي عمل. It's your choice in life. You have to decide what you want. And you have to live it. If you fail, it's your responsibility. If you succeed, it's your responsibility. It's never, oh, well, it's society, it's the mujtama, it's uh, ahli, it's uh, regulations, it's a religion, it doesn't matter. All these things don't matter at all. 
With that concept, you have to always think of that play to win. What does it mean to play to win? Play to win, it's an energy, it's a mindset in our heads. How do we want to portray, uh, portray that into our lives? Being alive, being alert, being awake, uh, being aware, being so, uh, conscious of our surroundings, conscious of what's happening in our lives, always capturing the ideas surrounding us. Whereas the milling energy, it's something that it, it, you work hard, you work tough, you get exhausted, but it doesn't really reach much. It's automated, it's never the present, it's not involved, you're always just doing, repeating, just to get it done. Oh, I have to finish, I have to finish, I have to finish. Stop. Sit down, read that uh, book or uh, sharpen that skill so that you can do better. Oh, but I don't have the time. It's just like somebody in the car driving with benzene, almost got to be but I don't want to get out benzene. No, I but if you don't stop, then you're in trouble. Whereas if you just delay 10 minutes, fix that situation, fill the gas, then continue, that matters the most. Sharpening the skill, always focus on sharpening the skill. There's always that concept of what the professor, it's that. It's religious. You cannot say, but Allah, doctor, fi No, that's not acceptable. It's whatever the, the way they tell you, that's the only way. Whereas in reality, it's not. As long as the notija, one one two three, I can do it. You can do it. Doesn't matter. As long as we reach the same conclusion, same results. So it's always the ability versus the preference. We all have preferences in life. We all have different preferences. Whereas the ability is something that we could. We can read. We can read. We can read. Whereas, how do you do that? That's your choice. If I ask you, I'll tell you, I'll put it like this, shabbik. Okay. Who has the left thumb over the right thumb? And who has the other way? The rest of us. We are all able to shabbik it. But the choice of the person, to put it like this, or to put it like this, it's a personal choice. Did that change the result? No. It just changed your, showed that you have a different preference versus me, versus you, versus you. So it's a personal choice. Don't let, and I'm sure education is not going to You allow that creativity. But you know, yes, do whatever that you want to do the way you like it. There's no right or wrong as long as you reach that conclusion, as long as you reach that objective. Of course, طبعا هذا القاعدة الوحيدة في الحياة اللي هي it never changes, which is changed itself. التغيير هو القاعدة الوحيدة التي لا لا استثناء لها في حياة الإنسان. It's, there's always change. Whatever the plan you put ahead, you will have obstacles. You might find yourself detouring, coming back. Change is an obstacle. And if you don't adapt to change, it will change the day. أسرع من الوتيرة الزمان. يعني some of you probably may have saw the episode في برنامج رمضان عشان سلفي. سلفي لما القصبي دخل غيبوبة 15 or 20 years I think then he woke up like كل social media all over the world وطبعا قبل 15 سنة ما كان في social media it's not that far but it's interestingly just 15 years ago ما كان في social media so he woke up shocked what happened to this world a pace of change happens and if you don't adapt you disappear you don't adapt you will fall behind Kodak was the largest company in the world that does photography solutions Kodak did not believe in the digital uh, concept of uh, photography. Kodak died. As simple as that. If you don't adapt as a person, if you don't adapt as a business, you fall behind. And today's pace is far further faster than before. You have to really revisit your solution, revisit your uh, decisions or strategies, and change accordingly. As a person, لو بكرة مثلاً صار jobs حقت ال coding programming is obsolete. Let's just assume five years from now, ما عاد حاجة اسمها في coding. صار الكمبيوترات automatically codes itself. سمعنا كل ال coders اللي عندنا كل ال programmers ما عندنا وظائف. Then what do you do? Either you die or you find another solution, another profession, another trade, and you learn and you move on. But the idea is you never stop. You always have to be flexible to change whatever that needs for you to change. Have you written your eulogy? Anybody knows what a eulogy is? أحد بيقول Yes, when somebody dies, the loved ones of that person write a eulogy. Uh, we on stage, you see with the coffin, we tell them, we go to Allah, Fulan, Kanab, Jayid, Wazoj Saleh, Wa Mwadhaf Jayid, we tell them, and we tell them, Rahmallah, Fulan, Kana, Wa 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 Kana, W
from five different perspectives. What do you want your parents to say about you when you're dead? What do you want your spouse to say about you when you're dead? What do you want your colleagues at work, if you work, when you're dead? What do you want your kids to say about you when you're dead? What do you want your best friends to say about you when you're dead? Write that in a journal. That description of what they want them to write is that how you want them to see you. Which means that's the life you want to live tomorrow. And I might say, well, I want my children to say I was a salih when I was never home. I never lived with them. I don't see them. I can never, they will never say it. I can say, he was always away. He was never around. So write what you want them to say about you. In essence, you wrote your story. You wrote how you want to live the rest of your life. That, what you wrote in that eulogy, will determine how do you want to live uh, the rest of your life. But write it and live it. You cannot write it, put it in the door and put it in the never follow it. But in reality, when you're dead, people will men mention, that's reality. Whatever you want them to say about you when you're dead is what you write in that booklet, is what you live by the rest of your life. Can uh, I'm going to skip this part. Maher Zain can be talking about this concept, which is a very interesting uh, song. Um, I, I, in my blog, I wrote a uh, blog post a few months ago, if I was 30 years old. Um, and that was triggered by an interview I did a few months uh, earlier. If I was 30 years old today, what would I change from my past uh, life, from 30 years ago? How would I look into it? So with having this in you, with you guys, if I was 20, I'm hoping that's the average age, uh, more or less, so if I was 20 years old, I could go back to the time machine, into my, my 20 year old, in my, in my college the days, what would I do? How would I think? Knowing what I know today, of course, what would I advise? From a work perspective, you need to have passion to whatever that you do. You need to have passion to whatever field you do. Everything that you do in life, you have to have passion towards. We only live once. This is it. There's no rehearsals. There's no... Uh, uh, round two, it is this, this game over that comes suddenly and you never know when game over is going to happen. So live the passion that you like. It's mafi rehearsals, mafi round two, mafi tajarub, mafi. It is one life and it is it's now and the game over is not an option. It will happen no matter when. We all know this. Seek to learn, never stop learning, always learn, always grow, always grow. Growing is essential. What makes you better is by growing into your mental uh, knowledge. Don't have your own company, unless you have to. This concept of entrepreneurial is, is, is trendy, it's, it's cool, but it's not important. If, it, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Know what you like. Maybe you want to try it, give it a shot, try. If it works, fine. If it doesn't work, it's fine. But don't just follow the herd. Just because everybody is doing their own business, that doesn't mean that you have to do it. It's not important. Start saving money now. I cannot stress this enough. Saving money is key. أهم شيء يجيك من أي دخل يجيك Always, first thing you do is put some money aside, then do all the spending, all the rest of the spending. Saving is key. From a personal perspective, have a bucket list. Again, it's, you'll only live once. Hold your wish list of a bucket list of things you love to do in life. And put them and start clicking on each one that you accomplish. As silly as jumping off a cliff, or high, whatever that it is, it's your choice. Put it on a bucket list, go achieve it, live it. You only live once. Stay healthy. If you don't spend time on healthy now, you'll spend money on healthy later. As I mentioned earlier, it's a fact of life. Respect time. Time is of an essence of everything we do. Respect time means you respect others. You respect the society. You respect the people you work with. Respect time it means you respect yourself. Time is important. Whenever time is gone, it doesn't come back. So it's محسوب علينا كلنا. Learn to meditate. That disconnection from the outside world, that disconnection with anything beyond your own self is important. You need to learn that, master that. yoga, whatever it is, you need to learn to do that because it's like magic into affecting of your personal health. Before we end, these are three interesting books I personally would recommend. They are very good. Uh, Discover Your Own Destiny, Rami Sharma, Rami Sharma, Lihu Katab, uh, the monk who sold his Ferrari. If anybody have read that book, it was a really good book. This is the second part of it, an even better book uh, in my opinion. I would really recommend this book. If you're doing your own business, if you have a certain plan of, of uh, commercial or financial growth plans, this is the Bible of this. This is the guide. The grow, Think and Grow Rich. It is an important book. 
that you can get and it will help you plan everything from a financial perspective. You want to build a business, financial growth, this is your book. Blink, for Malcolm Gladwell, it teaches you the, the, to learn more about the psyche of others, how to learn the effect of people, decision making. How does decision making happen in people's minds? They say when you're in fear or in a situation of a hard emotional trauma, the heartbeat goes high. And if the heartbeat goes over 150, automatically the body shuts down the logic sense. So you think you're thinking logically, but you're not. You're just in a fear mode. Fear mode means protective, means survival mode. So the body only acts on instinct to defend its, itself, not thinking logically. So it's interesting to know if your heart rate goes high and you're afraid of something or situation, do not make a decision until you calm down because then it's only then when you'll be able to make a sound logical decision. At the end, life is too short to waste on whatevs and regrets. Life is really too short, even at the longest. So think of the statement very wisely. You, as I mentioned, the game over can happen anytime. Do not accept the regrets in life. Live the life you want, do whatever you want, fail, it's okay, Grow, stand up again and move on. But don't reach the deathbed situation of, I wish I did that, I wish I did that, I wish, I wish, I wish. You cannot change anything that's happened already. But you can always change what's coming in the future. So, Life is too short to live on regrets. Focus on what you want. Focus on achieving it. Fail. It's not the end of the world. Stand up again and move on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarkam. Very motivating. I think great to know, Brian. Any questions? We have like five minutes for questions. If you have any questions, please uh, raise your hand. Any questions? You have a question there, uh, the Aziz Saloon. The Aziz? What's the first step to take to find a mentor? What's the first step to take to find a mentor? Mentor? Faradhan uh, Intertipun Film Marketing, for example. Then you look around you from the small circle of people you know in the marketing, or even bigger names. All the multinational countries, uh, companies with the uh, field of professional marketing, الكونسيبت حق المنتورينج موجود عنده فانت ممكن ترفع السماعة على مثلا هيد اوف ماركت حق سابك مثلا وتكلموا عن الموضوع هي ويل بي اف هي هاز ذا تايم هي سي اوكي اي دو ات فور يو اور يقول لك انا مشغول بس يو نيد تو لوك اراوند فور سمولر سيركل وتطلع اكبر 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 انتل يو فايند سمبدي اور اسك سمون يو نو هوز ان ماركتينج هو تيل يو اول اي نو سمون هوز جود اور اف يو نو بيرسونال فاملي فريند هوز مور اوف بيرسونال كلوز صديق الوالد مثلا او شيء ذات ويل ايفن بي كلوزر بس يعني دو ات عمل السيرش حقك و then start contacting these people through conferences, مؤتمرات, so on and so on and forth. Or internationally, you can go online. You'll find international mentors. Even a culture, a concept, موجود عندنا أكثر من عندنا كمان. Can? But you cannot ask it question. هذه مشكلة. إذا أنت عندك موقف وتحتاج advice, the book will not tell you exactly. يعني sometimes you need to talk to somebody. You know, when you have a situation صعب في حياتك تحتاج تتكلم مع شخص الكتاب ما راح يغطيك الكتاب يعطيك أفكار بس you need to unload, unwind to مع شخص Any questions? Female side, any questions? Any questions? All right, thanks Hello. everyone Thank so you everybody We'll be here if you want to talk to me Thank you Thank you I hope it was good